Welcome, Patriots, to this episode of Raven's Radar. It is going to be a fabulous show today. I cannot wait to bring our guests on and show you everything we've got going on. But first, if it's in your sights, it's on my radar. We'll be airborne shortly. Welcome, Patriots. It's that time again. It's time for another episode of Raven's Radar, and we have an action-packed show for you today. First, I want to start, like I always do, about talking about what is going on in the world. Most of it is a joke, just not the funny kind. So we've got um, drama going on, uh, ongoing drama going on in the response to East Palestine. Uh, As many of you know, on February 3rd, a train carrying the who's who of toxic chemicals uh, derailed in a small town of 4,900 people in Ohio. And it has just been an epic, cataclysmic fail from this government. These people have been hung out to dry in the worst possible way. So let's take you through the timeline. February 3rd, The train derails February 5th. The governor gets around to actually mentioning it. 12 days later, the EPA pretends to care because I guess they have something to do with environmental disasters and culminating with finally, these people are getting some attention and response to this disaster because the president finally made his way to East Palestine. I think we have a clip. Because there's a more important thing going on. They're gonna invest billions of dollars in a new enterprise. Not that president, the real president. To the people of East Palestine and to the nearby communities in Ohio and Pennsylvania, uh, we have told you loud and clear, you are not forgotten. You are not forgotten. We stand with you, we pray for you, and we will stay with you in your fight to help answer and the accountability that you deserve. We'll have that accountability. It'll all be out there very clearly. Amen. President Trump was in the house, guys. The rock star. Elvis has left the building, showed up, and actually gave some much-needed attention, gave water, bought food, uh, listened to the concerns of these people of East Palestine. He did what a president is supposed to do. He led. Meanwhile, we've got Biden doing his version of where in the world is Waldo, and he's in the Ukraine, his first love, uh, his premier laundromat, okay, for funds. He is in the Ukraine. Guys, you can't make this stuff up. Americans are struggling. Their soil is contaminated. Their water is contaminated. Their air is contaminated. They're sick. They're without resources or attention. And Biden is in the Ukraine doing a money laundering victory lap with Zelensky. And there's just no words for it. There are no words of what it says to the American people when the so-called president decides that he's just too busy and he's too um, too not ready to be bothered to go and deal with this disaster, which is solely in his wheelhouse. My heart honestly breaks for the people of East Palestine, of the message that it sends that our government didn't think they were important enough to attend to their issues, their concerns, their health concerns. These are real. We have dead fish in the rivers. We have oil slicks on the water. They're not sure if they can drink the water. They're exhibiting symptoms. They don't know if the land, the soil is safe for the food that's being grown. I can't imagine what it's like to be in that scenario and have 
President Biden between naps, pretty much thumbing his nose up at you. But thank God for President Trump to come out there and lead and actually give a damn, actually get out there and help these people, encourage them, give them hope, give them a voice and get some much needed attention. So hopefully he will leave a big arrow like in Vegas, you know, come here, come here. So hopefully, you know, he couldn't find his, it took him two years to find his way to the border. So hopefully he can do a little better with East Palestine. And while he's been doing that, we're seeing um, a real life escalation, uh, a not so entertaining version of the Patriot, the non-Patriot games. I should say, going on as tensions with Russia are escalating. They have pulled out of the last uh, arms agreement we had that was kind of holding this whole nuclear threat diplomatically at bay. And they are basically laughing. What I want to tell patriots is when people said at the top of this before the election that Biden was dangerous, this is what they're talking about. This is is what they're talking about. Everything that they accused or worried that President Trump was going to do, Biden has done. Debacle in Afghanistan where we stranded Americans in hostile territory, check. Gave $85 billion in high-tech equipment to terrorists in flip-flops, check. Have cut our oil lines and so now we are no longer energy dependent we are depending on russia and other people for our oil who we are attempting to sanction and negotiate with while gas is sky high check empty grocery shelves check having our 401ks depleted check stock market up and down check ridiculously grossly inflated numbers check. And the most important thing of all, we had a spy balloon. (laughs) We had a spy balloon traverse our country and hit all of our nuclear bases and military bases. And Biden was bird watching. Okay, that balloon was riding with Biden and it crossed our entire U.S. before it was finally shot down. And that's, my friends, that's the way it is. That's what happens when you get weak, inept leadership. Reagan was the first one to instill this doctrine of peace through strength. You need to have the respect and sometimes the fear of your enemies. There are certain things that are happening now that wouldn't even have been attempted under President Trump. We are all less safe. We are overrun. The border's overrun. We are just in a terrible state, but people are slowly waking up. But for the people slowly waking up, the rest of us patriots are on the front line because we don't have time for you to wake up. Join us. Get here fast because Our country needs us now. This is a distress signal for our country like we've never seen it before. And we have to get this right. We cannot hand this dumpster fire over to our children. We cannot do that. It is not responsible for us to hand them a country that is trillions in debt, unsafe, overrun, divided. We have to do better, patriots. We have to do better. And we're going to have to step up and get it done. In that vein, we also need to tackle some of the things that are going on. We have a fabulous guest coming on today. We have the one and only Heather Hobbs. She's going to be joining us and she's going to be giving you some real accounts of what happens with a wide open border, what happens when we don't uphold the oaths we swore for elected officials. You are not going to want to miss this right after the break. I'm Raven Harrison, the conservative warrior, and I created Raven Pack because like most of you, I am tired of sending my hard earned money to nebulous GOP causes, which normally wind up in the hands of rhinos or people who are supporting a far left or radical agenda. 
I'm taking a stand against a political party that is supposed to be fighting for you, but more often than not, winds up fighting for the status quo and against your hard earned values. Your contribution to Raven PAC will be used to support true conservatives and candidates and our movement and warriors like myself. People who not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. You deserve to know how and where your hard earned money is being spent. And I'm going to show you in real time. Please use the link below and make your most generous contribution. Freedom is not free. Together, we can restore America and put the American people first. Integrity is making a comeback, and we thank you for your support. Thank you, and God bless America. Welcome back, patriots. You guys know what I love to do more than anything else is bring our frontline generals to the front. Is it a coincidence they all have H's in their names, Harrisons, Hobbs? We have a fabulous patriot on our show today. You're not going to believe this story. We have the one and only Heather Hobbs with us today. She's got a story about the border, uh, pro-life sex trafficking, being a mother who's been under attack and fighting these fights for longer than most of us care to know this has been going on. And she's joining us now. Thank you for having me, Ray. Hey, Heather Hobbs. So the one and only Heather Hobbs, I'm so honored to have you on the show today. Uh, will you start by telling, I, I know a lot of, about you because I've been following your story and people are wanting to know how this is delved, how we've delved into where we are, where we're here now. So tell our listeners and our viewers a little bit about you. As you know, because we're friends, I'm a mother. I have had five children and one of them has passed away, but I have four still with me. And because of my children, having them recommended to be aborted, the first three, I first got involved in the fight for life. And I was raised in a very liberal, secular household. My oldest daughter being conceived through rape when I was in Germany is the reason I became a Christian, how I became more, more conservative with every child. And I've just followed what I call God's rapid progression plan. I say yes to God. So it's taken me not only to fight abortion, but to the border crisis, to perform human trafficking rescues, to fight for the Constitution, to educate America that we are in a republic, not a democracy, to fight critical race theory, medical overreach. Anything that I feel God is pressing on my heart, I go and do. And I do it for my children so they have a nation to inherit. And that is, woo, we're going to break these down. That was gold. It was gold forged out of fire, patriots. We're going to break each one of those down because we have similar views. You said a lot in that segment. But, you know, one of your child children was the product of rape. Is he less or she less valuable, less amazing, or less alive than one that was not conceived? Because a lot of the anti you know, the ones who are fighting for the right to murder children need to hear this from you. Tell us about that child and what makes them so special. Her name is Alexandria. She's going to be 15 this year, which means learners permit. Terrifying. Oh, my gosh. But... <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Watch out, Texas. <laughs> but I tell people, I believe in punishing rapists, not babies. I don't believe that a child is inherently evil because of who their biological parents are. I know for me personally, I know a lot of people that have parents that have done terrible, wicked things, and yet they've turned out to be great people. For her, she is a God-loving, tender, compassionate angel since the day she was born. I've never had a problem with her, and she's a light to all that she's ever met. In fact, General Flynn always asks me how she's doing because he have, is so impacted by her bright light. And I don't believe we should dehumanize people based upon race, gender, disability, or way of conception. I agree with you wholeheartedly. This is a position that I stand by because when people ask me, well, you know, what if, what if about rape? I said, rape just makes that a horrible circumstance. It does not make the child less than not. The child is still innocent, still innocent. So, and thank you for shining light for those of us making that pro-life argument that all life has value. Okay. All life 
has value. What was used for, what was meant for evil will be used for good and little becomes much in the hands of the master. Don't get me preaching in here. Somebody get the collection plate. Okay, yes. but that's where we, we want. So Alexandria, we are saluting you here and the rest of your children on Raven's Radar, but that's important to make that fight. And it is an argument. It is a fight that I have almost every single day. So go into the, the rest of it. Now you're talking about legislation because these things have happened to you. You have experience with the sex trafficking. You have ex experience with rape and some of the most horrific things that can happen to a woman in this society, but yet you're on the front lines now. Uh, tell our listeners where the fight comes from and where you're taking it now. Where's the fight from Heather Hobbs? I've been very blessed that God has given me a somewhat rebellious nature. I've always been inquisitive and wanted to know the truth. And because of that, though I was raised in the public school system and I was raised being taught all of the lies that our children are being taught through the media, through the internet, through social media, they're brainwashing our children. And that's the product I was meant to be. However, because God blessed me with such an inquisitive nature and the desire to seek truth, I've been able to find so many truths and it has drawn me to start, like I said, fighting abortion. But as I lived in the state of Oregon for 12 years, I continually had women who were trafficked or teenage girls who were trafficked who were being forcibly given abortions. And because of the laws in the state of Oregon, it's, it's really easy to do. You can have full term on demand abortion. I also have testified in the state of Georgia with the Georgia heartbeat bill for no exceptions. I've been to Kentucky, Colorado, Utah, California, all over this great country, and now including Texas to fight the rape and disability exception. And that is fantastic. I don't know for most of the listeners, I'm going to say what most of them are thinking. Is Oregon ground zero for crazy? I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, not that it's not, it's not headed here fast, but Oregon, I mean, that is brave in and of itself. You having a pro-life argument in Oregon, but, you know, patriots, this is a lesson. Many lesson out of these lessons is we got to take the fight where it is, and that's where it is. So I, I really applaud that. And what has been, what is the majority of the press back that you get on this when you, you share your story? because you have a story that's hard to pick with. What is the majority of the pushback you get from this and from who? That is a very big, broad question that I don't know that I can summarize in such a short time. But I will tell you, it's been reported in the Epic Times and many other outlets, such as the New American. I had Antifa dox me and my family in Oregon. I had BLM come after me. Stacey Abrams in Georgia has come after me. And every single time I get the pushback from the opposing side, it almost makes me smile because I feel like Satan is, he's scared. The devil is scared of the power of every single one of the children of God on this planet. And when they recognize their value and worth and their ability to fight, Satan gets scared. So he will push back. So yes, I've got Planned Parenthood. I've got lobbyists. I've got all of these very strong pro-abortion people. I've got people that say that I hate immigrants or immigration those things are just simply not true. That is Satan showing his fear and showing his hate. And that makes me fight even harder. And I agree with you. That's, I just wanted people to hear you saying that your family is doxxed. You saying that, you know, that you've gotten these threats in this. I just want people to understand that this is an element of spiritual warfare. We are not warring against flesh and blood. So Christians know what that means. And that's what it means. So what's the mantra I have on my wall, which Heather obviously knows well, is the devil whispers, you cannot withstand the storm. And the warrior replies, I am the storm. Yes. And that's how we do it. That's, it's, uh, that's powerful. Faith is powerful, but faith without works is dead. So you have to be a doer of the word. And in that vein, so you've also been tackling the issue we have many issues we have on the border. Tell us a little bit about what your work and what you're doing on the border. I've been going with groups such as Arizona Border Recon. I've been working in tandem with Border Patrol in Texas. Those who I work with have to remain anonymous as far as ones that are employed by Border Patrol. I work with Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, Kirk Linus out of Dallas and many other Constitutional Sheriffs around the country. And essentially what I'm doing is 
I tell people I'm not qualified to do anything that I do. God has qualified me by calling me places and giving me the resources and the skill set and the adaptability and knowledge to succeed in whatever he calls me to do. And so I do go down to the border as a 34 year old mother of several children. And I go there because I feel God calling me to go there, but I go there with highly trained individuals, with background checks, everything's done completely legally. And essentially what we're doing is we're actually shutting down the cartels, we're stopping them. We bring in military grade drones with sacks and drones. We have Lone Wolf Industries where we bring in a robot dog. We have seismic sensors in the ground. We have over $500,000 of equipment performing these operations. And we are rescuing girls from the hands of the cartel as well as stopping the cartel. And then we call Border Patrol and constitutional sheriffs and say, we have them detained, come get them. And it really takes four to five hours because, as you know, our border agents, they are given a small group of guys for a large 80 mile stretch. They can't patrol all of that and shift. And a lot of places are too rugged to get to. So the trains that I'm going to are extremely rugged. They're totally off grid, no electricity, no water. It is 100% off grid. And that's where the bad guys are coming through. The left wing media would tell you that their family unions are escaping persecution. But I will tell you, I have a high level border agent here in the state of Texas, down in McAllen. And he has told me all of the family units, they come at one well lit spot across the river. Everywhere else, it's not family units. Over 80% well, of the people crossing are fighting age men. Well, exactly. And see, this is where we're going to tear it down. We don't do fluffy bunny conspiracies here, you know, with Raven's Radar. But one uh, I wanted to important because God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies who he calls. So you're doing God's work and thank you. You're down there on the border because this is ground zero in Texas for sex trafficking. So this is where we need to open people's eyes up. That's why Heather's down on the border, Patriots, is because they are running through. So what the left wants to tell you is the border is secure. The border is not secure. We live here in Texas. The border is not secure. It's wide open. Okay. And it's it's the reason they want to tell you as well. It's just It's just family unions seeking a better life. That is garbage. Okay, it is garbage. What it is is fighting age men and people who are running drugs and fentanyl and sex trafficking. Heather, you probably like I have seen these little teeny bracelets that have been at the border. And that's what the, that indicates how much they are indebted to the cartels. And some of them are so small because they came off a tiny child wrist. Okay, and most of these, these girls were raped and assaulted, you know, in transit to illegally cross our border. And now Biden wants to tell, well, the, the, the border crossings are down. That is also garbage. That is smoke and mirrors. What he's basically saying is instead of letting them wade in the river, we're encouraging them to come through the ports of entry, but they're still coming in illegally. So that's not a, a, a crossing. It's basically sanctioned illegal immigration. It's an wrong? invasion. It's an invasion, Raven. This is, this is not just immigration crossing. We are being invaded. Americanism, as we know it, is at risk. And it's not anything to do with other than America is the last beacon of hope for the world. Correct. We are the rally for freedom. The rest of the world looks to us to lead the example. And when we talk about the different types of debts on those bracelets, it's also coded so that way you will know if that person is for sex trafficking, are they for organ harvesting, are they for slave labor, are they for drug muling? And that includes the children. Recently, we rescued two young girls from the Arizona border south of Tucson. And these two girls were about 14 and 17. They were sisters. They went willingly with the cartels. And I said, why would you go with them on purpose? Didn't you know you could be sex trafficked or killed or raped? And they said, our dad was raping us every day at home. And we thought maybe we could escape into America and get away from the cartels. And I said, God delivered you and saved you for a reason. Now you're going to go to Border Patrol. Do not ever go back with these men. Take this advantage. Get yourself to a good place. God saved you. And they burst into tears. And that gave me so much comfort as a mother, especially one who recently lost a child. Yes. Think about maybe their mother, maybe their aunts. They're wondering where they are. And a lot of these girls, they don't go willingly. They just get snatched. Right. Could you imagine one of our children, Raven, just disappearing one day and never knowing what happens? I and can't 
I that. can't imagine that. And as a mother, I can't imagine anything that I would want for my child that would start by putting them on a journey like this, that would be taking them. How could I hold my daughter by the hand and walk her up to a border illegally, knowing that this is the likelihood she'll be taken, she'll be raped, she'll be abused, beaten, possibly killed for her organs. I mean, how do I justify that? Well, I want a better life for her. Well, that isn't the way. Nobody's American dream should start with breaking our laws. And my story with that is I've gone down to the border and I'm with people who are boots on the ground doing this. 11 year old girl with 22 semen samples inside of her found left for dead in the desert. Okay, and she was waiting near an unmarked bus on our side of the border that was waiting, filled up with illegals and took them to somewhere in the interior of the country. That's what they're not reporting on mainstream. That's not a better life. That's the government uh, funding and sanctioning this dumpster fire, this human rights catastrophe. And that's exactly what it is. So and I've now, seen the buses, Raven. I've seen them in Kansas, Nebraska, Ohio. I've seen them in Wisconsin. This is not just a Texas problem. And that's what most of the country doesn't seem to understand. This is happening to every state. They are dumping them everywhere. And that is intentional. That's for the redistricting. That's for the election fraud. All of it. They do. And then they have the nerve to scream about, you know, infrastructure. We need to pass this for infrastructure. You know, part of our infrastructure problem is we have five and a half million illegals that have come in since Biden who all need health care, schools, a place to live, jobs. And they are filling some of the the vacancies with illegal labor. These people are not vetted screened and coming across it is not doctors and our best and brightest that are coming across that border in the middle of the river let me assure you of that but i want people to know the most important thing is heather a lot of us hear this and we're outraged about but what do they actually do about it i mean you and i we're frontline fighters we are taking the fight right to it where can people find you how can they get involved and what's next for you here's the thing raven everybody can help and serve America. Every person, whether old or young, whether disabled or perfectly fit, you don't always have to go down to the border with me or some of these other people that go or you. You, you can donate your funds, you can donate your time, you can help out with social media, you can write letters, you can go to the Capitol building and fight for legislation that, that pertains to what you believe in. Call your legislators, send letters, emails, Everybody has the capability to do something. I cannot tell you how much it makes me insane to hear people say, I don't have time, and yet I know they're watching Netflix, binge watching it every night after work. Right. You could be spending that time educating people. I mean, look at the memes out there that are waking people up, the silly little memes that are awakening American society. That is a way a lot of my elderly friends help the cause, is they're sharing memes or little news articles. Every little bit counts and matters and is equally important. But the point is you have to do something. You cannot discredit or discount your ability to make an impact. Plant those mustard seeds, all right? And let everybody else step in and help nourish them. And God will do the rest. But if we're not getting up and getting activated, it's not going to matter. It's not going to help. And as far as where you can find me, I'm on Twitter at Hobbs for Life. I'm on Facebook as Heather Hobbs. You can go to SUJTC dot com and contribute to our cause and i'm working with so many other great people like you raven and weston martinez out of san antonio we're yes. doing so many different big things whether it's election integrity if you have a passion for that i will connect you with those people if you want to work with the frontline doctors uh, fighting the tyranny that we've been seeing in the medical system i have those connections for you if you have, need a lawyer to help you keep your job because they're still pushing some sort of crazy medical tyranny I can connect you with those lawyers. God has blessed me to be a connector. And I care about all the issues that impact my children's future. And right now that's a lot. That is, that is it. Patriots, that's it. And so Heather, you've got that. We're going to put your website and information up on the podcast. Any Patriots who are looking to get a hold of Heather, feel free to reach out to me as well. And we will have that information available on the Raven's Radar podcast and on Raven, the conservative warrior. And Heather, it has been an absolute thank you for being here. Thank you for showing 
patriots what the fight looks like i mean they see it from me and they're probably thinking i'm going to scalp somebody so they need to see <laughs> they need to see another mother we are all in this we can do much together and i'm so grateful i'm so grateful to be able to call you a friend on top of everything else and heather you and i have some work to do going forward we have some some places we need to go and some resources and people we need to irritate patriots that's what we do when i'm not here so we will be reaching out, but thank you for being on the show today. We are so grateful to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Patriots, for joining us on another episode of Raven's Radar. Special thanks to my guest, Heather Hobbs who's telling a really important story. Guys, these are the ones in the fight. These are our frontline fighters. They are risking life, limb, and home to bring you the truth. Let's make our their sacrifices worth it. We always say freedom is not free. It was paid for by the blood of patriots. We have to make their sacrifice worth it. Be worth it the sacrifice for people who gave everything for this country. We were made for a time such as this, and we can do this. I want you all to join us. Go to my website, ravenharrison.com. You can find me on social media as Raven the Conservative Warrior. Raven's Mantle, the highly anticipated book, it's going to be a it's going to be a barn burner. It's going to it's going to make it happen. That's going to be available for pre-sale any day on ravenharrison.com. I'm going to be anxious to see the feedback from my patriots as we continue to move this forward and we get the truth out. Justice dies in the dark. We're carrying a big floodlight. It's going to be great. We'll see you next time.